This is Neil Schneider for MTVS TV at Sixth Sense booth at CES 2015. To my immediate left is, is Danny Woodall. I hope I'm pronouncing that properly. Uh, Danny, what do you do at Sixth Sense? So I'm the creative director here at Sixth Sense. Okay, wonderful. So what do we have on display right here? So today we're kind of showing one of our new experiences that we call V, v Retail. And this is a, a glimpse of to what uh, our system can, can do and add to a, kind of a virtual shopping experience. How is it different than what's been displayed up to now? So what's interesting is that now that you have all these uh, six degrees of freedom, you can naturally interact with things that are in front of you. So we, we can populate these uh, rows and columns of virtual shelves with any item you want. And you can reach out, grab it, and look at it in, in you know, full six degrees of freedom. Um, you can, uh, depending upon what the item is, you can go as far as you want since it's all digital. You could have an interface that you could be trying out on a new phone or something, or you could have like a camera lens that you want to put on and see these things actually, um, you know, understand what the product is a little bit more before you actually do the purchasing of the product. So, so just so I have a, a better understanding on the on the hardware level, mm -hmm. so you're you're using, I take it, is it the stem system? Is that what we're are we calling it something different now? No, like what? It's, it's still the, it's the six end stem system. Okay. And uh, we're using our, a three tracker setup, so we have one on the head for the position tracking, uh, for the head, and then we have uh, a controller for each of your hands. And this and the software is called V Retail. Is that what we're referring to? And we're talking right. okay. And V Retail is a service to. Yeah, it's, it's a service that uh, people can use to um, create their own shopping experiences. Uh, you can imagine someone like Best Buy that has, uh, you, you know, they, you look at, go online and you see much more, many more items that you can actually buy than in the store. This, you could imagine like a, a kiosk where you can kind of go into the store and you could actually see these items that you couldn't see them before, uh, you know, in the store. And so that could actually open up a, a huge, um, you know, market for them to have these items that weren't previously available in their store to be uh, accessible. So is this designed to be an online platform so people remotely shop and go through the store or, or is there any or is there a benefit to this for being at the retail location itself? I, th I think there's there's both. Of course, uh, at the home, which would be very interesting, is now you can start introducing a social aspect to it. You can invite someone in and give their, they can give you their opinion on the items that you're looking at, you know, or uh, suggest other things, or, or you know, just having that confirmation that what you're what you're buying is 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 the right item. Okay, very good. Well, I'm going to try it out. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to do some shoe st shopping. So okay. my wife is going to be insanely jealous. And uh, is it shoe shopping? Is that what I'm going right. to see here? We're going to do a little shoe shopping today. And as long as you give us your room number, we can charge your room. But no one needs to know what kind of shoes I'm buying, right? That's right. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. It'll be our little secret. What, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, as they say. Okay, so just give us a second. We'll get set up here. All right? Yeah. So just go ahead and kind of look around and uh, kind of get familiar with the environment here. We got, if you look all the way to your left. You're holding the mic when you're saying that, right? Yeah, I got it. Look all the way to your left, yeah, and see a mannequin, right? And if you look all the way now, 180 degrees to your right now, and you can see kind of this virtual menu that's kind of hovering in front of you. Yeah. If you reach out and just kind of poke at the shoes button. There you go. Now you got this kind of virtual uh, shelf of shoes. So you can kind of grab the the space just in front of you by pulling the trigger. And then now while you have it, you can move the shelf around. And you can actually give it some momen momentum. And if you let go of the trigger while you're throwing it, you can actually kind of throw this thing. Oh, yeah. And you can go vertically as well. Let go a little earlier with your, with your there you go. Like a, like a mouse twig. Yeah, kind of. Well, you can do either one. You can do the kind of a gross movement and just kind of let go. But uh, yeah, and so if you see something that you like, you can just reach out and pick it up. So, uh, all right, I'm going to try these. Yeah, go ahead and take a step forward. So, all right. Yeah, towards it. Now just reach out and touch the heel. Yeah, there you go. Almost. Oh, almost. Okay. There you got get it. To the heel. All right, there we yeah. go. So now, of course, you can just look at this, you know, like you normally would and uh, with your six degrees of freedom, right? Um, but if you, now if you let go of the shoe kind of just right in front of you, just let go, it's going to bring up some information about the shoe. And you can go ahead and change the color of the shoe by touching any of the little options there on the right. Like, I, there's something you should know. Um, no matter what color these shoes are, they're going to look very bad on me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with red. It'll be our secret, but... Uh, <laughs> I mean, you've got to know that it's all lady shoes, right? That's right. <laughs> so if you wanted to try it on the lady, why don't you go ahead and turn around where you saw the mannequin, and you can kind of walk over towards her and just put it right on her shoes, right on her feet. There you go. Of course, since you have the position track, you can get up right real close to that shoe and kind of check it out as it's moving around. Oh, yeah, you got a little wrist cable here. So, so this is, uh, yeah, so positional tracking is actually quite good. I mean, it's, uh, 
Oh, I pressed the button. Oh, that's okay. Well, just, hit, just hit the, the button again. And now, uh, oh, just, one, just one time. There you go. So why don't you try grabbing another shoe? So you, you grab by the heel. Sure. All right, the and then shoe. there's another way to get to the man. You can just kind of throw it to her feet. There you go. There you go. Okay. And so why don't you grab the shoes that are on her feet? There you go. And why don't you let it hover in front of you like you did before? H hover? Yeah, just let go of the shoe. Yeah. And oh, now if you, if you touch the video, the actual video itself. Oh, excuse me. Yes. Yeah. There you go. So it kind of brings up a bigger vision of the video. You can see someone actually wearing them and uh, see how they look. You yeah, can go ahead and. Yeah, now if, you, if you're satisfied, you can go ahead and, uh, you know, make this go away by touching it again. And then you can touch the Add to Cart button. Uh, okay, okay, there we go. Right. So now it's been added to your cart. You can uh, look back to where the menu was, right, and hit the hit a face button on any of the controllers that brings face up the menu. Button. Okay, yeah. And then touch the cart button now. And you can see that this item is in your cart. So oh, if you wanted okay. to remove it from the cart, you would actually just physically grab the, the, the shoe. Yeah, hang on. There you go. And then there just go. now it's out of the cart, right? Very nice. Great. Yeah. So this is, uh, so we were talking before that this could be an online experience. Do you, do you in, have you put thought into it being an online experience or, or are you, is your initial launch looking to be directly in retail outlets? I think initially, I mean, everybody's got these devices at on their home. Uh, that the the online aspect is going to be very appealing, especially with the social aspect added to it. And is it something that like the application is completely downloaded, or is this a, a streaming technology? So right now it's it's pretty early, but uh, streaming is probably the way that's going to end up going for sure. Okay, very good. And you know what I what I really like about this, like in addition to of course when I mean, you've got this wonderful retail application, is the positional tracking. I mean, of of course DK2 is a development kit, but you know, I'm just going to kneel down. I mean, it's like I can, I really have that full range of, of movement. And, uh, you know, the, the latency is, at least for me, is the non-issue. Um, so you've got a good mix going on here. Yeah. Yeah, I think the, the idea is to make it as intuitive as possible, you know, and having really good tracking and real low latency. Uh, you know, I, I don't really have to give you too many instructions because it just it just works as you'd expect it to. Yeah, there you go. So I'm just working with the hands and yeah, good stuff. So it has some type of recognition of my elbow joint as well. I take it. So we we're using some uh, inverse kinematics uh, to solve for the the rest of the joints. Now, of course, if you added you know additional trackers, you could have those solved by tracking points. But uh, you know it does a really good job so far using just the three three points and understanding the body posture. Okay, good stuff. So I'm going to take this off now. Great. Yeah, let me take the controllers from you. There we go. Hey, you know the big miracle is I was talking to you and I wasn't facing like here away from the camera. So somehow <laughs> things things worked out that I was in the right direction. So very good stuff. So is this is this something that's being effectively launched very shortly for retail? Uh, it has the potential to be. Right now, it's still in development. Okay, still in development. Uh, do you have a time frame? Uh, not that we can discuss just yet. <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. Well, congratulations. I mean, it looks very promising. It's a. I mean, in this case, it's an excellent mix because, again, as I pointed out, the positional tracking worked for me, and uh, it was really easy to to grab things in that retail outlet. So it looks, again, very promising. So congratulations on that. Thanks. So uh, you know, we do have one other piece that we could show you is this kind of our vision of this going to the next level, which is adding uh, you know, the social aspect to it. And, and it's going to be inside of Unreal. So it has uh, you know, um, the materials and the shaders and just that, that engine itself is just really gorgeous. So we're going to show a quick video. Yeah, let's see it. OK. All right, good stuff. So Dan, what do we have on display here? So what we're showing here is, is kind of where, where our vision is going to go. You know, we're going to start moving everything that we have into the Unreal Engine. We've already got, made a lot of progress with this, the Sixth Sense VR SDK in, in the Unreal Engine. So the next step is going to be kind of moving this application into Unreal. And Unreal gives us you know, these great shaders and materials where you get a real sense of what this material is. Leather looks like leather. You know, stone looks like stone. Glass looks like glass, you know, to the point that you feel like you can actually touch it. Which, you know, because this is virtual, you can kind of go to the next level and you can virtualize all these interfaces. It's like you could pick up an iPhone and try the touch inter interface and you could pick up a camera and try maybe do the different lenses and how they fit and the size of them. And it's digital so you can really do what you want.
So is there, are there competitive advantages with the Unreal Engine versus what you were doing before? I know you mentioned these features, but is it something that you just didn't have access to before? Uh, so our focus has been shifting towards the mobile uh, side of things, and Unreal is now just ramping itself up to support Cure VR. And so we are doing that as well, for on, both on the PC side and also for, for Gear VR. So um, the other thing that Unreal offers is a really robust, um, you know, multiplayer, uh, you know, experience, social, exp or, uh, you know, networking platform. So to, to get that ex experience where you are socially involved with someone in this environment is, is going to really make uh, this kind of come to life, where you feel like you can talk to somebody and get this kind of affirmation that what you're looking at is, is really what you should be buying, and Unreal is going to give us a big head start to, to, to do that. So one question I have is, I mean, you're, you've got this wonderful mix between Sixth Sense and Oculus. You know, this is, like, this is one head-mounted display product. I mean, you're kind of balancing things out between them. Um, but, you know, Alex, uh, Oculus is a, is, a, is a platform. I mean, they have a direction that they're going sure. to go. Uh, have you looked at combining the Sixth Sense technology with other head-mounted displays in the market? Is this something that you're you're exploring? So what's really interesting about the VR SDK that we've talked about earlier is that it, it's device agnostic in many ways. And, and one is, is of course, the, the HMD. It's, it really doesn't care what the HMD is. We can use any HMD, and we can use, a, you know, even any different types of input trackers as long as they provide, you know, position and orientation. So we are not tied to any specific uh, you know, HMD model or type. Because I could see, I mean, I could easily see this being mixed with other solutions in the market because, you know, the different displays and the solutions, they're good at what they do, mm -hmm. but obviously solutions like this help, you know, balance things out. Um, well, anyway, congratulations. It looks, it looks very exciting. I'm, I'm glad, of course, to see Sixth Sense again at, at CES 2015. Uh, you're excited for the show? I am, yeah. Hopefully I get to go and see it. <laughs> I'll be here quite a bit, but yeah, it, very excited. The grass isn't necessarily greener on the other side because you do have to actually go to see it, and it's yes. like, you know, Vegas is a big place to, to cover. But anyway, thank you so much for, for joining us on MTBS TV. Thank Thanks for having me. Ha stopping by, Neil. This is Neil Schneider for MTBS at CES 2015. We will, of course, be back with more. Thank you for watching.